you're twice as sure with two great names. Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. With the music of Johnny Green. Directed by Jeff Johnstone. And now Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X, international troubleshooter who flies the ocean at the drop of a hat, who charms the ladies, but is death on crooks. Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Quiet tonight, Dr. Dawson. If you will forgive my playing with words, is it this Pacific influence? The ocean of oceans, Professor. And now we cross the Tropic of Capricorn. Mm, Capricorn is the goat, which nibbles at the stars. Aye, and from here on, the world turns upside down. <laughs> winter is summer and summer winter. It's a little like standing on one's head. Ah, but there's still the moon in its proper course. The moon is scowling, Dr. Dawson. Doesn't like that cloud. And you, you seem depressed. Professor, I must ask you a question. Yes? You were invited on this expedition to the Antarctic for the same reason we all were. Field research. An exciting project, isn't it? I have reason to believe that it's not research that interests you, but conquest. The clouds don't like the moon's face, Professor. The moon is blotted out. It shall be as dark for you. Oh, no, you wouldn't... Oh, oh. Hmm. Well, man overboard. Man overboard! Man overboard! Oh, Chief. Well, stranger, Ken Thurston. Nice to see you back again, Mr. X. Glad to be back, Chief. Sorry I can't stay longer. <laughs> well, I see you haven't changed any. How quickly can you get me on a plane for Santiago, Chile? On the first one out, if it's important enough. Chief, I've developed a compelling interest in science. Oh, yeah? In fact, I'd like to confirm a theory with those distinguished gentlemen aboard the SS Archimedes. Oh, that expedition. Since when have you become interested in meteorology? Since Dr. Stuart Dawson of the University of Edinburgh was, um, lost at sea. Mm, I read that report. Dawson was a geologist, wasn't he? He was also one of the world's leading authorities on uranium deposits. Uh-oh. That make it important enough? Important? At the moment, I can't think of anything more important to us. Ellis, get passage on the first plane out to South America for Ken Thurston. Where are you going to pick him up, Ken? The Archimedes has put in a Valparaiso to take on supplies. They'll be at le- least a couple of weeks in Chile. Well, remember, Ken, one of the largest foundations in this country has subsidized that expedition. It's on the level. They're just a bunch of stargazers checking up on a new world in Antarctica. Uh, A new world with the power to blow up the old one. Amigo, only two pesos. Postcards, pretty. Hey, hey, Mr. Thurston. Oh, you, who, Mr. Thurston? Pagon Zellschmidt. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Oh, someday I must go to the equator, Pagon, where there is no shadow. Maybe you won't be there. Oh, thank you, Mr. Thurston. I knew you would be pleased to see me. Well, that's one interpretation of what I was just saying. Oh, thank you. Is it worth any money? All right, Pagon, come on. We can talk about money, but I find a hotel. Oh, that has been all arranged. And I have saved you what you owe me in commissions by sleeping in your room... Until you arrive. You think of everything. Come on. Mr. X, 
Right. While waiting for your plane, I saw a rainbow and a pot of gold at the end of it. I don't see any rainbow, Pagon. And we are only at the beginning. You see, Mr. X, it's as plain as mud. Those scientific professors are really looking for gold. Of course, they've taken you into their confidence, Pagan. Well, the waterfront at Valparaiso is full of gossips. And some friends of mine, riffraff, but strictly high class, are working on their ship. So you've taken advantage of your international subterranean connections. Well, Mr. Thurston, okay, how Okay, can... what have you really found out, Pagan? Well, I wanted to speak to you about that, Mr. X. You see, I followed the professors from the harbor to their hotel in Santiago. But when I presented my credentials, the door was slammed in my foot. Unbelievers. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. I have other plans. You see, a fancy reception for them is being given tomorrow night by a rich old woman, the Senora Margarita Avila. Avila? Well, that must be the wife of Professor Avila. Hmm. Someone I should know? A lot of money. Oh, go on. Very successful scientist. Yes, yes, he interests me. Too late, Pagan. He died five years ago. Oh. But the old lady still has the money. Now, now there is something I could work on. Uh, Pagan... Would you like to do me a favor? Mr. X, your slightest command is my wish. Good, then uh, let me work on it. Si, senor? Excuse me, is Senora Avila at home? Yes, she is. My name's Ken Thurston. May I speak to her? Come in, please. Thank you. Well? Well? Will she be coming down soon? <laughs> that is impossible, Mr. Thurston. Well, isn't she at home? Of course she is at home. But then... Oh, no! No, it can't be that good. I beg your pardon, senor? You're not the senora. But why not? You're so young and so... Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Is that so shocking? No. Now it's much easier to ask you a favor. Oh? You're entertaining the distinguished members of the Archimedes expedition tomorrow evening? Yes. I'd like to meet them. You see, I'm a kind of a footloose correspondent. Correspondent? I, I don't like the conventional interviews, so... Ah, uh, if you attended my reception as a guest, you could get your information informally. Yes, that's it, yeah. Well... Can you think of any reason why I should refuse to cooperate with you? Well, after all, I am a stranger. A stranger bearing compliments. I shall be pleased if you will join us tomorrow evening, Mr. Thurston. On one condition. On any condition. You must no longer regard yourself as a stranger. Of course, Mr. Thurston, the vast majority of laymen think of the Antarctic as a wasteland. Of no consequence whatever. But, Dr. Thorio, haven't a lot of people read of Admiral Byrd's discoveries? Oh, yes, indeed. But to them, it's merely an adventure story. They have no idea of the vast resources of this immense continent. I've heard rumors about gold. Mr. Thurston, I'm not speaking of material wealth. Though, of course, no. there must be an abundance of that. Oh, yes, yeah, no. So I'm, I'm referring to the fuller knowledge of the nature of our two poles. I understand that clearly. Uh, I, I... Uh, sir... Uh, with the controls that we'll eventually establish, mm -hmm. we shall at last have nature on our side. A very pleasant and I... prospect, Dr. Florio. Oh. Even though it would put us all out of business. Uh, Professor Sedor, uh, you met this young fellow, Thurston? How do you do, Mr. Thurston? Senora Avila has mentioned you. Yes, I, I've just been explaining to Thurston here uh, about the real implications of our expedition. Implications, Dr. Florio? I thought everything was out in the open. We haven't any secrets. Or have we? Well, <laughs> what... Whatever secrets we have, Professor, represent the failures in our search for truth. Uh, now, first, in, Mr. In your Thurston, articles, if, uh, if Dr. Florio can spare you for a few moments, our hostess would like to speak to you. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, uh, but I will see you later, Thurston. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> Thurston, how can such a windbag have room left for an idea in his head? He knows his physics, though, doesn't he? Oh, yes, yes, that's the trouble. He knows so much in his field that he hasn't the slightest notion of what goes on outside. Judging from his eloquence, he's trying awfully hard to make contact. <laughs> well, when you get tired of Florio, try Gallahoo. Uh-huh. He never says a word. Very relaxing on a voyage. Your voyage didn't have a very auspicious beginning, did it, Professor Sedor? 
Uh, you mean Dr. Dawson's death? Uh -huh. You know, I wonder why he ever sailed with us. Well, didn't the Foundation select him? Yes, of course, but Dawson didn't have to get on the Archimedes to take that way out. Suicide? Thurston, he was at the end of his rope. Tried to run away from a domestic situation and found out he couldn't run away from himself. Uh, scientists can be fallible, too. Very. Well, here we are. Senora Avila. Oh, thank you, senor. Uh, Mr. Thurston, there is someone here asking for you, a Professor Zellschmidt. Zellschmidt? Zellschmidt? Yes, he calls himself Elepidopterist Pluribus. Oh, that Zellschmidt. Looking for butterflies in Santiago. Oh, you never know about a Zellschmidt. He can look for anything, anywhere. Oh, well, since you know him, then he's all right. You've let him in? Oh, he left me no choice. Shall we find him? Senora, if Professor Sedo will excuse us, I'd much rather dance. Senora Avila. Yes, Mr. Thurston? At least, while we're dancing, may I call you Margarita? Have I refused any of your requests so far, Ken? I'm indebted to you. Have you found what you were looking for? Much more than I was looking for. Oh? Uh, Ken, would you mind? It's rather warm, and my garden is lovely by moonlight. I'd love to see it. I meant you to. I noticed that Dr. Florio was monopolizing your time. But after all, he is the head of the expedition. He expressed his opinions very freely to me. Yes, I know what you mean. Uh, did you find Professor Sedor interesting? Margarita, I have a confession to make. Oh? My interest is no longer journalistic. Oh, are you disappointed in your material? Oh, no, no. I'm just beginning to discover its possibilities. Then do me a favor, Ken. Promise me that you will let me read your articles when they are finished. Who was talking about articles? Oh, <laughs> then we have been talking about two different things. I was talking about you. I'm sorry I interrupted you. Go on. I've heard so many long words tonight, I'm beginning to appreciate understatement. Understatement? Perhaps I should demonstrate. You see, I could try to be grandiloquent, but the way I feel is more like this. <gasps> oh. Oh, why did you kiss me? I could say that it was in the interest of science, Margarita, but uh, the simpler reason is I, I just wanted to. Margarita. See? Si? Your party was a great success. Thank you, Sidor. And the American, Mr. Thurston, was very attentive, wasn't he? Does that matter? You were very responsive. <laughs> Sedor, you're jealous. Why did you invite him? He asked me to. Margarita, have you gone out of your mind? No, but I may have lost a little of my heart. You will stop this nonsense, my dear, when I tell you who Mr. Thurston really is. Oh, is that all that's bothering you? What? Darling, I know all about Mr. Thurston. He is handsome, he's gallant, he's intelligent... And here's the man called X. Good night. I'll return to Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Mr. X has gone to Santiago, Chile, to find out why Dr. Stuart Dawson, a famous scientist, disappeared at sea while on the Archimedes expedition. Mr. X has met various members of the expedition at the home of beautiful Margarita Avila. But he still has no evidence of foul play. On the other hand, Margarita and her friend, Professor Sador, have learned that he is the Man Called X. Ken has returned home from Margarita's reception, and at the moment is entering his hotel room. What took you so long, Mr. Thurston? Oh, here you are, Professor Zellschmidt. I wondered why you'd slipped off to. Catch any butterflies? A golden butterfly, Mr. X. Uh? While you were pursuing the beautiful lady, which I saw out of the side of my eyes, 
I was needling the very top men of the expedition. Dr. Florio? In person. And he revealed to me the whole plot. No. Yeah. What plot? Uh, Dr. Florio said it was a golden opportunity. Doesn't that tell you something? Yes, it tells me your interest in the project. I hate to disabuse your mind, but this expedition isn't a gold mine. Nor am I. Good night. You don't know what you're doing, Mr. Thurston. Now, if you're worrying about your fees... As... Pig on! What? what? Pig on the transom! Duck! What, what was that? Mr. X. That pig on was our golden opportunity. Gone. fashionable to promenade in Santiago as it used to be. But, Ken, I did want you to see Park Forest Hall. Lovely, Margarita. Practically in the center of the city, but you feel as though you were miles away. Isn't that what parks are for? To get away? Uh, Margarita, your reception for the scientists, are you really interested or is it your devotion to the memory of your husband? Both, Ken. That was why I married my husband. Oh, not for science alone. You see... A woman is denied the adventurous life. She must live vicariously by keeping in contact with people who find adventure. Adventure in laboratories? Laboratories can lead to expeditions. Oh, why were you not honest with me, Mr. X? Oh, where did that come from? Your butterfly professor offers all kinds of bargains. You think Pagan was a publicity agent of mine? If you'll be frank with me now, maybe I can help you. Just what are you looking for? A reason for murder, and probably something even more important. Murder? Why would a man, worrying about family difficulties, commit suicide somewhere in the Pacific Ocean when he had no family? You are speaking of poor Dr. Dawson. Did you know him? No, but I cannot believe it. This learned gentleman on the Archimedes, why would they want to get rid of him? That, Margarita, is what is even more important. Ned? Oh, hello, Professor. Good afternoon, Mr. Thurston. Come in. I'd like to, but I have a lot of details to attend to in connection with the expedition. But you wanted to see me? That is one of the more important details. Oh. I have talked this over with my colleagues, Mr. Thurston, and we all feel that we should have with us, shall we say, a, a scribe to keep a chronicle of our voyage. Mm -hmm. How would you like that? Well, who could refuse it a tempting office? It's a golden opportunity. Then you'll come? Yes. Good. But we sail in the morning. Can you be ready by then? Ready now. Splendid. We'll all be very happy to have you with us. And now, goodbye, Mr. Thurston. Goodbye, Professor. Mr. Thurston, you didn't even mention me. While you're going off to the South Pole, what am I supposed to do? Pagan, you try the North Pole. <laughs> Evening, Dr. Florio. Oh, hello, Thurston. You still up? Nice out on deck tonight. Uh, a bit cold. Uh, have you seen Dr. Gillihue? Uh, he went inside with Professor Capstaff. Oh, I should think about 15 minutes ago. Hmm. Well, I think I'll turn in, too. By the way, Thurston, glad to have you with us. Any assistance I can give you to authenticate your notations to call on them. Thanks, Doctor. Good night. Good night. Oh, Mr. Thurston. So you didn't take my advice, Pagan. Stow away? I should have thought of that. Here I'm working as a deck hand. You won't make as much money that way as you did by telling Senora Avila that I'm the man called X. Oh, Mr. Thurston, how can you say such things? How much did you get for it? Oh, a paltry little... What am I saying? I haven't even confessed. You don't have to, Pagan. Skip it. Oh, maybe it's just as well, because now you can do something for me at my price. <laughs> Congratulations, Margarita. Oh, it's you, Ken. 
I was going to surprise you at the captain's table in the morning. So now it's no more vicarious living for you. It's real adventure, is that it? Why not? Why should I stay at home and dream? This trip may not be a picnic, Margarita. I know. But after all, I suggested you the Sedor. I got you into this, Ken. Oh? So I want to share it with you. Don't you think adventure and romance should go together? Well, it's much more pleasant that way. It'll make a long voyage shorter. Much shorter. Oh, do you mind if I go in now? I'm not used to the sea air. I'll take you to your cabin. Oh, don't bother. Just kiss me goodnight, Ken. Margarita. Oh, now I shall sleep well. Good night, darling. Good night. Still up, Thurston? No, Sado. Mind if I join you? Not a bit. Have you begun the log of our voyage yet? I don't know quite how to start. Why not begin with our leaving Valparaiso? That would be the easy way. But I have a feeling the story really begins with Dr. Dawson's death. That still bothers you, doesn't it, Thurston? Doesn't it bother you? What do you mean by that? Dr. Dawson must have bothered you. He knew so much about uranium. So? Almost as much as you do, Professor Sador. Very foolish of you to mention Dawson's family to me. Since he didn't have any. Yes. Very foolish. And it was very foolish of you, Mr. X, to accept my invitation. Don't move. Huh? You didn't shoot Dawson. I didn't think that was your method. It isn't. This is... Goodbye, Mr. X. You have to do it that way, Sedor. You didn't offer any other suggestions, my dear Margarita? No. No. I saw that farewell scene of yours. Very touching. Well, he's done. There is only one thing, Sedor. It was too easy. <laughs> so heavy to pull up. Like pulling up a whale. There. There. Oh. Oh, hold me, Mr. Thurston. I think I'm going to faint. Pagan, remember this moment. It may never happen again. You've chiseled, you've double-crossed me. You've lied to me, but right now, you're a great man. You saved my life. Oh, oh I only did what you told me to, Mr. X. Uh, it wasn't anything... But you might tell me why you let somebody throw you overboard just so I could save you. Now, later, Pagan. Right now, I'd like some sleep. I have an appointment at the captain's table for breakfast tomorrow. Incidentally, where's Mr. Thurston this morning? I haven't seen him, Dr. Florio. Perhaps he hasn't got his sea legs yet. <laughs> Nonsense, Sedor. I saw him walking the deck last night. He wasn't having any trouble then. I saw him too. He seemed to be enjoying himself. Well, if he's sleeping, let him sleep. Now, what was I saying anyway, Gallagher? Good morning, uh, Margarita. You... Gentlemen. Well, well. Who was talking about me? Ken. Good morning. Aren't you going to wish me good morning, Professor Sedor? I've told you to remind me last night you invited me on this voyage. It's fine. Why? What? Uh, what? What's happened here? Dr. Florio and gentlemen... Forgive me for being late for breakfast, but you see, I overslept. I had a swim last night. Swim? Swim? What in the name of... It wasn't my idea, Dr. Florio. Professor Sedor's. If Dr. Dawson were here, I'm sure he too could tell you about going for a long swim in the Pacific. A swim with no end for him. You can put away that gun, Sedor. You couldn't shoot anybody here. Besides, that would be mutiny. Ship's crews when advised, as well as the authorities at Valparaiso. <laughs> Well, this doesn't sound like a laughing matter to me, Senor Avila. Oh, for me, I am amused. Because for once, I spoke the truth. Remember, Sedor, I said it was too easy. Well, Ken, you have won. No, Margarita. You and Sedor have lost. Gentlemen, I think it would be best for the good name of the profession you serve that this particular incident of your expedition be not included in our chronicle. Professor Sador and his friend, who finds it so amusing, were planning to use you for their own purposes. They were playing high stakes, almost the highest. Uranium. 
But as you see, they had too many cards stacked against them. Mmm, coffee. Well, perhaps a good cup of coffee will brighten this day on the cruise of the SS Archimedes. <laughs> Our star, Herbert Marshall, will return in just a moment to tell you about next week's exploit of The Man Called X. The Man Called X is presented each week with the best wishes of your Frigidaire dealer. We invite you to come in and learn about the famous line of Frigidaire electric refrigerators, electric ranges, electric water heaters, home freezers, and a wide variety of refrigerating and air conditioning equipment... Now, Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Next week, a chase to Central America after a notorious racketeer who talks best with a 38 automatic. And with him is his all-too-beautiful daughter. I promise you plenty of thrills and suspense. As usual, Leon Velasco will be with us as Pagan Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> Frigidaire's Man Called X for tonight was written by Milton Merlin. The music is composed and conducted by Johnny Green, and the entire production is under the direction of Jack Johnstone. And so until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.